Welcome to In Her Voice. My name is Kelly Covert, and I am passionate about helping women live authentically by listening to their inner voice. Get ready to be inspired by women of all walks of life that have set aside their should be's and not good enoughs and are standing in their true voice, the voice of wisdom that each and every one of us has inside. Hello, you guys. This is Kelly, and you are listening to In Her Voice, and I am so excited that you decided to press play today because, oh man, do I have a treat for you. Our guest today is Bernadette Doyle, and you guys are just going to love her. We're going to be talking about resilience and our inner game and how to deal with things like overwhelm and how to find balance although you guys know how I feel about balance, but we talk about that in the interview, but it's so, so good. And I can't wait for you guys to listen to that. Before we dive in, I just want to remind you that I so appreciate you. And if you love listening to this podcast, you know what would really be super helpful to me for you just to shoot me a message on Instagram or shoot me an email at kelly at kellycover.com. Let me know that you listen. Give me a high five. Sometimes, and this is me just being really honest with you guys, I just need some feedback. So I know that people out there are getting the word, that they're getting the message that you matter and that listening to your inner voice is important and that there's women who are doing it and we can all step into that place together. So if you are loving the podcast, if you are listening, just, just shoot me a message, a quick, Hey, thanks for what you're doing, Kelly. I loved this episode. It was my favorite so far, or here's a great guest. I would love to hear you interview. Anything like that would be so appreciated from me. Now, before we get to Bernadette's interview, let me read you her bio. Bernadette Doyle is a transformational expert and the founder of the Online Profits University, an online school that teaches entrepreneurs how to create new income streams. Her entrepreneurial journey began at the age of 26, where she was successfully trading her time for money and found herself overwhelmed and constantly hustling despite how successful she was. After the birth of her first son, Bernadette found that her own success had become an anchor. As the demands on her time grew, suddenly she needed a team and to house and manage that team. Her previous business model was simply unsustainable. Soon after, Bernadette fully switched to an online model and soon found herself freed of her constraints. By packaging her expertise into products and online programs and connecting with customers by teleconference and webinar, she doubled her income in her first year as a new mother, all with time to spend with her family. By 2008, Bernadette had generated a million dollars in online sales and even masterminded personally with Richard Branson, all with the free time to be a single mother to her two children. And you know, I am bringing you guys Bernadette today because I feel that it's important to hear these stories of possibility. Sometimes we get so stuck in our own circumstances It's hard to imagine doing or being anything else than what we're doing and being right now. And I think that that's the beauty of people like Bernadette and other guests that I have on this podcast is that we get to hear possibility. We get the seeds of a different story planted inside our hearts that can really grow and that can turn into a new story for us. So I want you to take this and really listen to what Bernadette has to say because it is so, so good. Here we go with the interview. Bernadette Doyle, thank you so much for being here with us on In Her Voice. How are you today? I am great and thank you so much for inviting me. (laughs) Of course, of course. We're really excited to dive into this idea of resilience and how women can really create a space for themselves that allows them to be who they need to be. And I think that you have a really powerful story about learning and understanding that lesson. So why don't we start with that? Okay. Um, Well, I guess I was developing resilience 
as soon as I started in business. And I think it, it's one of the lessons that we all need to learn as business owners, whether we're doing it consciously or by default. <laughs> and um, I had grown quite a successful business. Um, but what was starting to happen in my business, and it happened so subtly, I really wasn't conscious of it, Kelly, um, where I was starting to make compromises um, with things. So for example, live events were a huge part of my business model. And I used to run them so they were always in my hometown so I could go home and kiss my kids goodnight, even if they were already in bed and asleep. And um, I started to get pulled by people saying, well, you need to go to, you know, well, you need to go to London, you need to go where the crowds are. And so I was running a live event in London in May 2011. And I was due to get on a plane and fly there. And right before I was due to get on the plane, my son was taken very, very sick. And uh, so at the time I was supposed to be on a plane, I was actually in an ambulance with him traveling to a hospital where they had a specialist unit because they were worried about organ failure. And that was something that really caused me to really sit back and look at my business because on the face of it, I had a successful business. I was someone that people was asking about how to create business and I was a role model for so many people. And yet I had to get honest with myself about what was really going on in the inside was, you know, my business didn't feel successful at all at that moment because I found that I was caught between this awful position of wanting to be there for my son, which obviously took priority, but then this dreadful feeling that I was simultaneously letting down all of the people that were at the event where I hadn't shown up. And at that moment, I, I decided that I was going to change my business model and, you know, to make it less dependent upon me. And it's led to an entire journey about building, you know, external systems, I guess, in the business. But then the inner journey, I think, is constantly about developing resilience and really trusting that um, the business that's right for us, for who we are as a human being, the, the closer we align with that, the more success we're going to have. Mm, I love that. Trusting that the business that is right for you that if you align with that, you'll be more successful. Mm -hmm. So that brings up two really big questions. So I'll do them one at a time. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> what What does it mean to you to be successful? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, to me, success is a balanced life. Mm, yeah, I love that. And like, what does that look like for you now, so, now that you learn that lesson? So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a single mum of two boys. And for me, like success means that I'm able to be present with my son at the start and the end of um, their school days. Um, that I am able to be present in my business with my clients, that I'm able to be present for myself. Um, which is an area of life that got sacrificed a lot over the years, you know, so things like my personal time for things like meditation, yoga, that took a backseat to all the other priorities. And I, I now actually treat this like as my spiritual practice, if you like, that like every day is an opportunity to learn to balance better. So it's not like you just go, all right, everything's balanced now and I, you know, I can set it and forget it every day there's something new that we're going to be presented with because that's life you know that's and that's the great thing about life that we get presented with challenges with opportunities and every day we get a choice of like how are we going to respond like is, are those challenges gonna th throw us into chaos or you know are they an opportunity to learn how to balance better so that's what i mean when i say success is a balanced life Mm. yeah so can we talk about the word balanced mm. because that's something that I, as a woman who does many things, I also have two boys and I have a lot of things on my plate and things that I enjoy and things that I'm passionate about. Sometimes I feel that to be truly balanced where all things are equal is not really realistic. So, I mean, is that, is, do you feel that everything is equal for you or is there an ebb and flow? Like what, what does balance feel like well i i understand why you would say that because i can remember a few years ago 
having the realization that some of my happiest moments were when I was pottering around my kitchen with my kids and I was cooking something for them or baking cakes with them or something like that. And I remember feeling at that moment that that my ambition, because I'm, you know, a very ambitious businesswoman and I have a talent for business. I remember having the thought, it's almost like my ambition is a curse because this is what makes me truly happy. Why am I also, you know, someone that wants to do all this stuff in business? And that was the moment when I suddenly realized, ah, oh, I was made this way for a reason. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I and I, I'm going to use the word God and I hope that's okay with you and your listeners. Totally but, fine, yeah. Um, you know, I, or each of us, we, you know, we were created by God. And, and I, one of the things that has made my life a whole lot easier is the realization that, um, the things that I'm drawn to, I'm drawn to them for a reason, either because they give me tremendous pleasure and, or, you know, it's an area where I can really contribute a lot to the world. And so the moment I took on board, oh, it's not either or, it's not like I have to choose between being a mum baking cakes in my kitchen or being the successful businesswoman. In God's plan for me, there is a way that this all, this all unfolds perfectly. So maybe I should just start trusting that instead of thinking that it's up to me that I've been assigned this task where I have to balance these, you know, seemingly very disparate parts of my life. And the moment I took that on board, even as a possibility, um, things started to get easier for me because now like one of my mantras is, you know, there's, there's a way. So if, if I ever have that moment of conflict of like, oh, I really want to be doing X, but I feel like I should, or I need to be doing Y. I, that's the moment when I go, okay, if I'm drawn to both, I'm all right. You know, I trust that there's a plan here, even if I can't see the plan. And I find that if in that moment, I'm willing to stay open, somehow things work out, you know, so it might be the obligation gets canceled or someone else takes it over or, you know, it's, it's always something that I, I'd never be able to figure it out with my human brain. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that so much. That just really resonates for me. And it brings me so perfectly as if you knew what my second big question was. <laughs> and that is, how do you develop that trust? The trust that you are aligning with the correct business, the trust that everything's going to work out. How do you practice that? I, I think the, the key to practice and develop a, a skill in any area is to start where you are and start small. So, you know, we're, we're taught as um, business owners or, you know, that we need to think big. But why not start by thinking small? Why not start by saying, OK, today, today is all I've got or this hour is all I've got. So let me stay open that in, in this hour, if I want to be doing x but i feel i ought to be doing y let me just stay open in this hour to how this gets figured out and there is something very powerful about the energy of willingness in fact if you've read the book power versus force where they calibrated emotions like willingness is like a turning point on that emotional scale and i think willingness especially when you can't see the details but just the willingness to be shown I think that opens up tremendous possibilities. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything maybe recently in your life where you really had to lean in to that willingness without knowing the plan? Uh, an example might be like um, feeling slightly overwhelmed looking at my calendar, that there were several appointments of the calendar and this feeling of like, oh my goodness, how's this all going to, how, how's this all how am I going to get this all done today plus you know the other commitments I have with a family and then things just occurring almost like magically where stuff gets taken off my plate either something gets cancelled or something gets moved or um you know something else shifts or opens up mm, yeah I find that in my life too it's just it's just like this you know, it feels like magic sometimes, <laughs> you know, like you look back on the day and you're like, wow, how did that work? And then I think that doing that again and again, and again, is then what builds the trust when you start to see that, you know what, you don't have to be in control. 
of everything. You don't have to be in charge of everything to make it work. Then you're more willing to like give up that control almost, don't you think? Absolutely. And you know, something else that I think really helps is I think particularly as women and particularly as women in business, we often think that overwhelm is something that we have to manage, that we have to overcome. Like it's another, it's another, another challenge on our to-do list, something else that we need to deal with. And now I, I look at overwhelm. I actually look at it as like a flashing light on my das- dashboard. So if I'm starting to feel overwhelmed, that the, that to me is like a flashing light, light on my dashboard that gets me to say, okay, I'm going off track here. Because in God's plan for me, there is no overwhelm. In God's mm. plan, this this all just unfolds perfectly. So if I'm starting to feel stressed, overwhelmed, or, or, or that's actually an indicator for me to course correct. And sometimes that course correction, it can just be taking a deep breath. <laughs> it, can, it can just be taking two minutes of, you know, time out. Yeah. You know, it's so funny that you say that because I think as driven, ambitious women, sometimes we feel that everything that we do needs to be a big deal, right? So yeah. like like we're going off track, we're feeling overwhelmed. Well, then I need to take three days off or I need to have a whole day of self-care or I need to go away for a week. And like you said, it can be as simple and as short as breathing for two minutes, mm. as closing your eyes and just like being still. And I think that it, that is such a powerful thing to share that it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be overwhelmed by figuring out how to be not overwhelmed. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like putting self-care on your to-do list and then it just becomes another thing that has to be checked off. So self-care becomes a burden <laughs> right? In, instead of something that supports you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I tried I that. Think, that doesn't work. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't work. And I think uh, I, I actually have um, a chart that I keep, I call it a practice tracker. And some people might say, oh, well, that's, that's like a to-do list, but it's not. It's really more to help me see the relationship between when I am doing my meditation and my writing and my journaling every day and the effect that it has on that day and when I'm not. It's a reminder for me, you know? It says, oh, I'm feeling really flustered and not with it and foggy. And oh, I can look back and I see, well, I haven't meditated at all this week. Mm. And so then it pulls me back into, okay, this is not something that is just, I'm checking it off. It's something that's critical for my emotional and physical and spiritual well-being. I really love that, Kelly, because it, you're you're showing how you're using that as a tool for feedback rather than, you know, proof that you've done a good job. I really, really love that. That's a great example. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's funny because I do have to be very intentional about it. And when I create it every month, like every month looks different. Every month I sort of focus on different things that I include in there. But it's not about giving myself a gold star. And I think that a lot of times those of us who tend to be perfectionists or high overachievers, we have to be careful about that. Like what we're looking for in terms of feedback, in terms of affirmation is feeling good every day Mm. and being alive to our purpose and why we're here, not to how many checks we have on our, you know, to-do list, right? Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, that brings me to this, this point of how did you in your business really dial down into what was aligned with your soul? You said when we're, when our businesses are aligned with, with what we really are supposed to be doing, that's where we're going to have the most success. How did you drill down into that for yourself? Well, I don't think I'm done yet. It's definitely a work in progress and I and I expect it to be continuing you know continually developing. Um but but one is is calibrating by how am I feeling? <laughs> so, mm. you know, if I'm ending my days feeling um exhilarated or accomplished or content and looking forward to um ending my work days and then looking forward to relaxation time with my family I I know that that I'm on track and by contrast if I'm starting to feel 
stressed or I'm, I, you know, I notice that I'm getting ratty. Again, it's feedback. It's like, it's like, okay, there's something off track here. I need to look more closely. Um, and for me personally, that, that means that the more I spend my time uh, working on the things where I know that I have a lot of natural ability. So it could be doing interviews like this or um, doing webinars. I love, I love teaching. I love doing things like Facebook lives and those things come easily to me. Like I, I do have talents in those areas. Um, and then there's other parts of, of the business that, you know, like project planning. I can do it. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay at it, but it's definitely not something I thrive on and I definitely don't feel energized by it so I, th I think to start to uh, one one way that I have actually given clients to do is like keep track of what you're spending your time on and then just ask yourself you know the things that you spent your time on today or this week did they energize you or did they drain you because if if it was draining to you that means that it's something you either need to eliminate from your business altogether or if it can't be eliminated you need to hand it off to someone else so you need to delegate it yeah. So I think that's a tricky point in, in businesses, like, especially if you're building your own business, if you're an entrepreneur, right. That there's this idea that, well, I'm really smart woman. I can figure these things out. Everything I can figure out everything. I can do everything. And by doing everything, I save money. And I think that there, all entrepreneurs come to this point of their business where they have to make the decision. Am I going to do everything and burn myself out? Or am I going to spend a little bit of money and hire people to support me on the things that I don't love doing? Mm. And how do you, as you know, as a coach, as a businesswoman yourself, how do you encourage people to take that leap? Okay, so when it comes to hiring help, and the fact is, in, in any business, if you're serious about growing, the only way that you're really going to consistently grow is if you start to file, fire yourself from certain parts of the business. And and it makes sense to, like, I, I have clients do it where I get them to list out, like keep an activity inventory and look at um, where they're spending their time. It's like, well, what are the things that you're doing that are really generating revenue for the business? Because you'd need to be doing more of that. And then what are the things that aren't revenue producing, but they're actually taking up a lot of your time? That's an indicator of the first things to delegate. Because typically you could find someone for 10 or $20 an hour to do some of those tasks. And if you as a business owner that you're evaluating your time by, you know, 200 an hour or, a, you know, a thousand an hour, whatever, then it makes you, you're essentially buying back your time if you hire someone to do that. Now, even when I give that as a, a an exercise to people, the next objection that I notice come up is that people say, well, you know, I, I'm going to wait until I'm making the money and, and then I'll go and hire that VA or then I'll go and hire that assistant. That's not how that's not how it works. You actually need to make the decision from your destination, not from your starting point. So you, you actually need, if you if you constantly wait until the money shows up to make decisions in your business and move forward in your business, you, you won't move forward at all. Because the way that you're currently working is actually blocking the flow of money into your business. And so it's only, you. It, it, there are sort of just leaps of faith that are required. So, you know, taking a deep breath and going, right, okay, I am gonna invest $300 this month to buy back 10 hours of my time. And I'm gonna get this VA to go and do the things that I've, you know, that I'd be spending time on. And then use that time for for the parts of your business that are income generating. Um, and, you know, some people are willing to take the deep breath and take the leap and some people aren't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this I think this is so good. And you know what I'm thinking about as you talk about it is that this same idea, this idea of really investing in your business and creating a way of running your business where you you are focusing on the things that you're really good at and that bring you lots of life and you're handing off those other things to other people. I think this can be applied in life as well. Don't you? <laughs> yep. Um, one of my favorite sayings is if God wanted me to iron, he would have made me good at ironing or he would have made me enjoy ironing. And as neither of those things are true, um, <laughs> 
I have not picked up an iron since 2005. And even then, I only did it as a favor to a friend. So that was one of the first things that I delegated out of my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, and I you know, as a mum, um, I found that, you know, when my business was growing, my children were small, that investing in domestic help was as important as investing in a VA. Um, you know, so that I was able to finish my day and know that there was going to be milk in the fridge, that, you know, the cupboards were stocked, that the children had, had that their physical needs had been taken care of. Um, that, that made a massive difference. Mm, yes. Yeah. This is so great. And I'm just going to repeat this amazing quote that you just gave us because it's so good. Make the decisions from your destination not your starting point. Mm. That is so powerful because so often we're making decisions based on our current circumstances, not from the circumstances that we want to be in. Yes. And, you know, if, if we can really start to practice that and, you know, that takes, that takes faith, mm -hmm. right? So what role for you does faith play? It's huge, <laughs> um, <laughs> as I think you can probably tell as I'm speaking. But, um, I, you know, I do believe that I, I truly believe that there's a plan for every one of us. Um, and those of us that are in business, I think there's a business plan for, for us. I think that um, uh, there's a great quote from Frederick Buchner that says, um, your vocation is where your passion meets the world's great hunger. Mm. And my interpretation of that is that the things that we're excited about sharing as business owners, there's already a corresponding need somewhere in the world. There's a group of people who are already looking for that. And, and I know that that's helped me, you know, when I'm, when I've started to sort of step out and make offers in my business and, you know, p particularly the early stage of my business, when there's no evidence, there's no evidence that people want to buy what you're offering. There's no evidence that people are really interested to, to just trust that. And, and also be willing to work with the feedback because I, I've, I've done things in business that I was really excited about. And I really thought, you know, this is like, you know, I'm getting my divine marching orders here. And then I took it to the market and it and it didn't work out exactly as I expected. But that's not to mean, oh, well, my intuition was completely off. It's like, OK, well, you know, what what needs to be adjusted here? So being willing to course correct, I think, helps as well. Mm, yeah, I love that idea of course correcting because I think that we can get so caught up in, well, I failed or I made a mistake or I'm, I didn't, I thought I was listening to my inner voice, but it turns out that I wasn't. And I have really come to find in my own life that I needed those moments. Yes. I needed those lessons. So it was exactly what I was supposed to be doing. Mm. And I think it's frustrating in the moment, but when we can really take some time and perspective and look back on what we learned knowing that we're so much further along because of that it makes it worth it absolutely mm -hmm. so true so have you have you had any colossal failures oh <laughs> <laughs> where would you like to start yeah i i, I can remember um my, my business was was successful at this point i was already at a million dollars in turnover and um, I decided to launch something and I had a proven model for launching products, which was I used to do like a free, it was a teleseminar back then, not a webinar, but a free teleseminar. And then, you know, make the announcement of this program and invite people into it. And I, I stepped into this thing confidently expecting that, you know, I was going to make over 100 sales and not a single person bought, not a single one. And that, that was hard to take because at that stage, I really thought, okay, well, I've, I've figured out launches. I know how to launch. And so it was, it was in hindsight, I suppose it was pretty humbling and it was a good thing to have that experience. But when I looked back and I dissect, dissected it, I realized that I'd created something that I thought people needed, not what they were telling me they wanted. Mm. So, I mean, that, that was a big one. Yeah. yeah, that's such that is such a good lesson. And I I have done the same thing too, where I create the thing that I want to give people instead of creating the thing that people say they want. 
<laughs> because you know we get all in our head about it and and you know we think that we ha- we we know everything and it really becomes about listening and listening in a, in such a way that you can really hear what people are saying when they talk to you yeah i think listening in business is one of the most important skills mm mm-hmm. oh i love that i love that so much so Changing gears a little bit, one of the things that I saw on your website that really stuck out to me um, was this quote, we need time and space to be women. What does that mean? It means we're not built like men. (laughs) They have a lot more testosterone than we do. So even like, even if you look at like the traditional working week, you know, it's Monday to Friday it's nine to five, you know, and actually if you're running a business, let's be honest, it's a lot longer than nine to five. Yeah. But if you look at how that, how that week even came about, it came from the industrial revolution. It came from capitalists running factories and needing to get return on their capital investment. And, you know, it was a a work week that was very much designed for a male being the worker. And, and I, I know as a woman, like we have, we have natural rhythms and cycles. We have our monthly cycles. So there's, there's times when our energy is higher and times when it's lower. And I think for women, it's really important for us to learn to, um, you know, work with our, with our own, our own flows and to know, like to know our own energy and to, to work with our energy. So that's what I meant when I said that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I love this so much because sometimes I know for me, like I look at my life and I have never had what most people would say is a regular kind of job. You know, I've, I've never really had a thing where I go to the office at nine and I come home at five. I've never done that. And so the people would say, oh, well, it's must, must be nice. And, you know, do you really work or whatever? But I think that what that has allowed me to do is to really understand my needs, my need to have alone time, mm. my need to move my body, my need to work at certain times of the day and to rest at certain times of the day and and how this is associated like you said with your monthly cycle like you as a woman you are not going to feel you know amazing on day 25 most likely <laughs> and so like to know where you are in that cycle and to not be surprised and also not to not expect that you have to be at your highest level 100% of the time is such a gift. Mm. And I, I really wish all women would come to this place where they would start to have like give themselves grace in that place of knowing that it's okay to be more relaxed about things and to give yourself a break every now and then. Uh, Well, hopefully conversations like this start to plant the seed and absolutely. Yep. So Bernadette, um, why don't you let our listeners know how they can find you and sort of what you do? I was I was fascinated by your business as I read through your website. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So my business, I started out teaching people how to get clients. And then I had people come to me and say, well, I see that you're doing this online. Tell me how to do that. And so out of that conversation uh, that evolved over a decade, Um, I've created something called the Online Profits University and it's like the nuts and bolts definitive um, process for taking something that could be as just starting an idea of like I have an idea of something I think I'd like to do and then really building out the online infrastructure so you can build a business that's a true asset not another job Um, because a lot of the way that people go about starting an online business is they're just, they're just creating another job for themselves. So, um, that's the online profits university, but as you can hear, I'm also really passionate about how we are in, in business, um, and, and who we are being in business and how we're showing up in business. So the place that people can find out more about that is at my business smarts with heart, um, Facebook group, which is a free Facebook group that I would love to welcome your listeners to. 
Mm, I love that business smarts with heart. That's fantastic. And we'll put links to all of this stuff and your social media links and everything in the show notes app and in the podcast app that you guys are listening to this episode on. So Bernadette, at the end of all of my interviews, I love to ask my guests the same question. And that is in your life right now, what is your inner voice asking of you? My inner voice is saying trust, just trust. I love that. I love that. And it's, it's so interesting to me because I, I think coming in, we thought that the theme was going to be resilience. And now what I'm seeing <laughs> is that it's trust. It's about trust. And um, I just want to honor and acknowledge you. Um, thank you for being open to let this flow out of us exactly the way that it was supposed to be. And thank you for the work that you are doing and being in this world. Thank you, Kelly. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening, you guys. I am so grateful for you. And I, as always, want to remind you that you matter. We need you showing up. We need you showing up believing in possibility believing that there is more for you. You are worthy.